Good morning. Welcome to Shop Talks. It's a production of the InkKitchen.com, which is an online uh, free information site. We also have podcasts called Low Bleed. They're also free. Uh, the sponsors here are Impressions to put the show on and have a magazine, uh, and uh, Haynes and Her Solutions. So I want to thank them. Big shout out to them. We have Ryan Graves with us today, who is um, the production manager, VP of, operations. VP of operations at Printed Threads, which is here in Fort Worth, which is a, a big shop that does a lot of different things, uh, all kinds of decoration, fulfillment, etc. And we're going to talk about workflow. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. All right. So, uh, you know what? Let me just get a sense of the room here. Big shop, little shop. Big shop, little shop, S small shop, okay. All right, well, we're gonna do a presentation and uh, I'll ask some questions and then we'll leave room for uh, you to ask questions as well, all right? All right, so, um, I wanna give your background a little bit and say a little bit more about printed threads. Sure. Yeah, so I have been at Printed Threads for about five and a half years now. Uh, the owner, Brett, is a good friend of mine, has been for about 20 plus years. Uh, met each other in the high school days and uh, stayed connected through the years. Music is a love and passion of both of us. That's kind of the, the tie that bonds us all together at Printed Threads. Um, and uh, at the time that I came to work at Printed Threads, I was actually managing software developers. I'm kind of a math science nerd and uh, I love physics and all, all things uh, moving and you know tangible. So working with software was fun, but it's it's sort of tangible, you can touch it, you can use it, but it also feels very fleeting all the time. You never feel like you accomplished something. And so uh, I found the business of making custom apparel interesting because it's still artistic, it's fun. You uh, there's a make whole stuff. Yeah, there's a whole system and process behind it. And then you get to watch it, you know, go down the line, out to the customer, see their reaction, and hopefully feel like you did a really good job. So. Uh, this has been a lot more rewarding and fulfilling to me in that way. And so, uh, yeah, at Printed Threads, I'm the VP of Operations. That just, to me, means that I am responsible for trying to make everything that we do work, work well, and be profitable. Uh, so the day-to-day -day for me is managing production, fulfillment, uh, logistics, shipping, receiving, and uh, all of the business administration stuff, too, behind the scenes. All right. So... I know that the business has grown a lot while you've been there. So what were some of the challenges? Like, did you start with an off the shelf software and then have your own or how, you know, where did, where did you start and where are you guys at now? Yeah. So as far as our, our systems go, um, I came in and Brett had actually already custom developed a system, uh, using FileMaker with a friend in the industry, another shop owner, uh, they kind of got together. Uh, talked about the process of printing. A bald guy? Uh, yeah, a bald guy. Uh, uh, here here in Fort Worth, too. Um, but yeah, so they, they talked uh, shop workflow. They kind of put their heads together, created a custom system that was uh, built uh, for each position in the uh, business to have their own view. And uh, so I kind of inherited that. Uh, I do have a little bit of software development in my background, and so... I was able to jump behind the scenes and start working on that system myself. Um, but yeah, we, when I came on to, to Printed Threads, we had about 20, uh, actually it was probably more like 15 people on staff. Uh, and we uh, almost went out of business right when I came on board. Uh, Brett had decided- It wasn't your fault, I'm no. sure. <laughs> Brett, Brett had, uh, had uh, I think, grown the business really quickly and needed a break and I came in and uh, things were a little shaky, so we we doubled down, worked together for a couple of years uh, to really perfect the software, perfect the systems, and uh, now we have scaled it up to, I think we're at 41 people on staff now. So just for the early days, what, what are some of the advantages of having a software that you, and a system that you, you know, developed yourself versus, you know, if you had bought something, you know, what, what, what was good about it and what maybe would be a, a tough sell for someone? Yeah, it's, I mean, the control is the thing that I love the most. If we're frustrated about something or you're, you're using it every day and it doesn't make any sense to click over here to do that action, you can just 
change that yourself. And that I love that power and the control and we can also build, you know, new features. If our if our shop workflow changes or we say, hey, it doesn't make sense for this person or this position to be doing that responsibility anymore, we can rearrange the information and make it look and function the way that makes sense for us as a business. Um, as you know, a lot of shops have very similar workflows. It's a very you know repetitive process, but everybody has their shops laid out differently. Everybody does it their own way. And so I, I just love the flexibility there. So expensive though, and you if you if you weren't a software guy, it probably would have been a lot more difficult, right? Yeah, I I don't think that it's very viable for most shops to go out and, and do that. I think you'd you'd probably spend close to half a million dollars just to get a really good system that you could use yourself. So um, certainly it's exciting to see some of these new systems coming up in the industry that are a lot uh, easier for people to get into and, and user friendly. So I know one thing with uh, off the shelf software, um, but it's probably true even when you develop yourself, how much is uh you want to make the system work for how you do work and how much do you do your work to fit your system? Yeah, I, that is, that is a hundred percent true. <laughs> uh, we love our system and I, I'm bragging about it. We have all this control, but we still have things in it that are broken and you don't always have the time to work on it. And so, yeah, you have to, to bend your workflow to it and, uh, that can be annoying. There's even in our system, uh, we actually have to, uh, we've supplemented our system with a task management software because there are parts of the workflow that it, it can't facilitate and I don't have the time or the money to invest to build that. Is and that so, Asana? Yeah. Actually, because yeah. we use that for some projects as well. Yeah, that, Asana is my a, favorite task management to, uh, tool. <laughs> Asana, A-S-A-N-A. It's, uh, it's not for screen printing necessarily. It's for uh, projects and especially if you have a lot of emails going back and forth. Instead, it keeps it all in one place. So if you have people in particular if they're remote or even not remote and you just have a, a lot of information um uh actually uh, pam is in the audience she could talk better and, and brian and i use it um uh, but it's uh it's a good way to keep track of projects a yeah. really good way yeah it's it's very flexible you can i mean you can you could i feel like manage a part of your shop uh using that um it's not expensive either right no, it's not. They actually have a free version that we're still using. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, like five <laughs> years later. Uh, the price is right. You have a limit on the number of users, but, uh, but it is a very flexible uh, system that you can use to work any kind of workflow through it. Um, and then there's, you know, you were saying you developed your own, and then there's off the shelf. I think there's also kind of in between. Don't, don't some of the softwares will do work for you? We use Price It actually and they're willing to develop things at a relatively low cost to you know fit our shop yeah there some of those do that right yeah there are there are things like that you know the internet of things uh makes it a lot more possible now for companies like that if you integrate a couple of different systems uh make them all talk to each other you can create kind of this hybrid uh standalone system that is not yours but it's it's in the cloud and right and how much do the, your like equipment companies integrate with what you do. Like I know we have uh, Tajima machines for embroidery and we're able to take our art files and just uh, scan a uh, QR code or bar barcode and it brings the design in. So our art department picks the embroidery uh, file that's gonna be used and the operator doesn't have to search for the file, they just, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think a barcode reader is maybe sixty bucks, right? Yeah, you're and you're it, a step ahead of me in and, in that and regard. And so you just uh, scan that um, that barcode, and it, it comes in. I mean, I, if you're beginning, you don't have that many uh, files, but once you're doing it for a few years, you have so many files, so many versions. It's a lot easier for your art department to keep track of those files than it is for the uh, operators to find them. Yeah, we haven't honestly invested a lot of uh, time and energy into the integration of the actual hardware. We've been so focused on just order management. Workflow and that. Yeah, exactly. But that's probably the next stage for us is that, uh, especially in embroidery, bringing right. in some of that. And then how much does your you know workflow of producing the items uh, integrate with uh, fulfillment? Like I know you do a lot of shipping of orders, both uh, wholesale to individual stores and, uh, you know, 
individual shirts out as well for customers. Yeah. So how, does that all integrate or different systems? Uh, different systems, yeah. So when we're sending something to fulfillment, it's we treat it just like we were going to send it out the door to a 3PL almost. Um, we don't box it up or anything, but right. as far as production is concerned, they have a ship method. It says fulfillment, and so they just wheel it over there, and then they import all that inventory into a separate system. And some of those systems are not that expensive for the fulfillment, right? So like Shopify stores and ShipStation and so forth, or uh, even a small shop can use those, right? Yeah, definitely. Like Shopify is, is an amazing platform. If you're not doing any stores uh, yet, they're a great one to use for customers. They have uh, good some basic inventory management features to them and a whole uh, app uh, store that you can get you know lots of different add-ons for so uh, i know a lot of shops that are using that um especially the business shopify business version for all of that no it's not expensive right no i think i mean you can you can pay a lot but you don't have to pay a yeah, lot. yeah i mean i think it's as cheap as like 30 bucks a month for their most basic store uh right. 70 which for is pretty functional right yeah and then yeah. um I don't know if you use it. We use ShipStation for uh, then the actual mailing of things. That that I think also is not expensive, right? No, and ShipStation is one of the best shipping applications. Also, yeah, definitely if, if Shopify you're just and ShipStation. Out, you should definitely think about uh, offering, you know, mailing of packages and stuff. If, if you're if you use a program like ShipStation, it's not too hard and. Um, a lot of customers really like that. You, you know, they're they're doing the fulfillment themselves, and if you save a step and it never has to leave your building, it makes them real happy. You kind of have a captive audience. You know, they, I mean, a captive um, client. You know, because if all their stuff is at your place, they're not going somewhere else to shop the printing or embroidery around. So if you offer those services, and they're not that expensive and not that hard to figure out. You know, the post office can be kind of confusing, but ShipStation makes that a lot easier. Um, I definitely recommend you look into that if you're uh, if you're just starting out or advanced. Yeah, it's an easy sell. Most people that are starting a brand, uh, we work with a lot of small brands. People come in with an idea. Uh, you know, they have a nine to five job and they don't want to be sitting in their garage at night shipping out orders and taking them to the post office. So it's an easy sell to say, yeah, let's get your products made and then we'll throw them on a shelf, ship out your orders. And I don't think there's an individual on the planet that enjoys waiting in line at the post office. <laughs> it's pretty much the worst <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> but, you know, it's not really... Um you know, when we started doing it, we were going to the post office. Turns out they'll pick it up. Yeah. It turns <laughs> out they'll give you big bags to put the packages in. Like, they don't let you know any of this. It's Absolutely. a great secret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they keep it well. <laughs> um, and then once you know that system, though, then you can plug your system into it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have uh, all of our systems on the fulfillment side integrated. It's it's very easy from picking, packing, shipping, and out the door. So. And typically, how long does it take to train people to get... Uh, you know their task in your system uh, and, and use your system like how how user friendly is it or what, what's the typical training time to show people how to use a system like yours in a big place um, when it comes to the production system it only takes us about I mean I sit down with them for about an hour when they first start and go through the system and um, on the production side we've got it drilled down to where it's focused on each role in the business so uh, I just show them their module and how to use it, what the layout is, and uh, and it it goes very quickly. So I would say it's pretty user friendly. Uh, the bigger workflow, like customer service and client relations, that they're in about four or five different systems, and so that takes a lot longer. I think it takes several weeks for people to be uh, to feel like they know what they're doing. So does your um, system help you do quotes and things like that, or? No, that's the next component I'm building. Um, no, I in all your problems here. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, we. So when I, that is one of the things I I did when I first got to printed threads. I I built a spreadsheet that automates our whole quoting process. Um, which you could, if you are right now using just pricing grids and having to use a calculator to figure out your pricing, you could find somebody that's a Google Sheets uh, like developer, and they could builds you an automated spreadsheet for a couple hundred bucks so uh, you could I would recommend that too if yeah you, if you want help with pricing to, to in Excel or, or Google Sheets find someone that can make it based on your pricing that you want so you just plug it in instead of having to do all the calculations yeah so in other words it's too bad I can't uh, bring it up here but 
you know, our pricing sheet has a place for different locations, how many colors, and then the quantity. You plug in the, uh, the, the garment price, and it tells you the price that you want to charge. If yep. you do different markup for different people, like sometimes you add 30% to the garment, sometimes you add 100%, you could plug that in as well, and it does all the calculations. And both makes it easier, and I think you're also less likely to make an error also. And... Uh, and you could, you know, it's quicker and more accurate. And yeah. I would highly recommend that. It, it, you know, if you're not good with uh, spreadsheets, which I am not, um, you, you can get someone to do that pretty inexpensively. If you look around, you'll find someone that can, uh, can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was probably one of the biggest time savers that I've ever done at Printed Threads was automating that process for the reps, that saving them hours a day of having to do manual calculations. So one advantage of some of the uh, off-the-shelf software you buy is they do integrate with the um, distributors, right? Y yours doesn't do that the, probably, right? No, no, it doesn't do that. Um, I, I have used a, a couple of those systems before, done demos, and I love that part you about it. explain actually how those work maybe for people that don't, haven't seen it? Yeah. Um, the yeah, like so if sh you have ShopWorks or Price. Oh, yeah. Like how, how they integrate with Sanmar, Alpha, et cetera. Yeah, so they, you can, I think Sanmar, uh, Alpha Broder are the two big ones that have their API developed and can integrate with systems. So it brings in, it can bring in all of their products or you can, you know, filter that down and say, these are the products that we use. It brings in their pricing. Um, and so you can, uh, has all their mockups and everything. So you, you start with this foundation inside of your system that has the whole product library available. Right. So if you buy like Price It, Shopworks, Printavo, Inksoft, one yeah. of those programs, they have the pricing from, uh, you know, what's a Hanes BPT? It, it's, it's connected to their website and the pricing yeah. comes in without you having to look it up. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm I don't a little know how I'm accurate it is. I was going to say, I, I know that it does bring some headaches. Sometimes it's not accurate, or sometimes you have special program pricing and that's not a part of that system. And so it's it's not foolproof, but it is nice. And uh, it's it's quick and dirty. Like, so you have, you have a customer that calls you, and especially when you think, all right, they're never going to use us anyway, but you can't be rude and say, I don't want to do that work. And you need to get them a quick quote. Yeah. You take the high price that comes in from the software and you give them that price and you're done. Yeah. You know, otherwise, it, so it doesn't waste as much of your time making the quotation, you yeah. know? Yeah, I will say we do use um, Inksoft for part of our business, part of our fulfillment business. We're not using their uh, shop management components, but they do have that. Um, and that's another way, you know, that really got us through the pandemic because uh, you get, I think, a hundred stores or something that you can create with their base level membership, and so we were able to very quickly create, uh, you know, fundraising stores uh, for businesses that had closed to raise money. Which uh, one is that? Inksoft. Inksoft. Uh huh. Right. So they have uh, like campaign type stores. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So, so uh, if you're not familiar with it, a campaign is you uh, have a design and you have a time limit, and uh, so all the members of a club or all the people that someone are trying to reach to support their charity put that up for a certain length of time and then at the end of it it compiles all the orders yep right? Something yeah like that. yeah totally uh it's and, and it's there's all a, there's quite a few different ones right there's uh, uh other systems yeah yeah they're uh, yeah printabo has the same thing they have they have some store functionality too like that um but inksoft has a lot of features built in natively that are really great for the fundraising component, showing the dollar amount that's been raised, showing the big countdown clock. A lot of other systems you have to add on stuff. Um, Your customers love that because otherwise, some say it's a, a school, someone in the, the parent-teacher group has to get all the orders in, <laughs> you know, get the sizes right, collect the money, give you the order, which is half the time wrong. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the great things about it. You don't get wrong orders. <laughs> so then they have to collect the orders. You have to do it. Then they have to hand it all out and yeah. maybe still collect money. Yeah. And it's a nightmare. The person hates it. The orders are wrong. You know, you deliver, you know, 300 shirts and there's three people that didn't get it. And you have to figure out how to get yeah. those three shirts printed because they're really mad. Yeah. And instead it puts it, it, it takes out the, the middle person so that... Um, 
the you know all the parents are paying with a credit card <laughs> and um or even if they don't have a credit card they get someone with a credit card yeah and they pay them cash and they order it for them and then it's all compiled and it's all neat and no one can complain because they put the information in themselves yep. and it, it's really a great tool i mean it's how like teespring and some of those custom yeah. ink you know it allows you to compete with them yeah for sure and i, w I would say that they ha the inks off the has a really good system for that. You can go from the front end web store to an actual production order and manage it through the whole process inside of there. Um, the only reason we're not using it for a lot of the shop management stuff is because it, it can be hard if you have, like we have five automatic print presses and each one of those has a schedule every day and we wanna you know organize those schedules. It, it's lacking in a little bit there, so. Um, but if you're a smaller, so a smaller shop, shop yeah, yeah a smaller shop, one, two presses, like, and you're just working from a calendar, like here's the jobs we have to do today, uh, it would be a really good option for sure. All right. Uh, maybe some questions. Anything else you want to say and then I'll ask me some questions? Uh, no, not really. I'm not a great uh, public speaker. So if anybody has questions, I'd love to, to answer them. Uh, we'll get to your question in a second. But one thing I want to say is one thing we try to do here with the uh, – it's my wife. She can wait. <laughs> um, we try to have people that actually do this work rather than train professional speakers. We figure that you want to know someone that actually does this work, that uh, can present. He's going to be around afterwards. You want to ask a question. If you're shy, that's not a public question. So the whole idea is to get people in here that know what they're doing. Allegedly, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got them all fooled. Um, so it's, it's, it's not about being a great speaker. That's not what it's about. It's about sharing information. We're hoping that uh, people in the audience will talk to each other at times as well. And it's like a lead-in to, to all of this and for people to connect and learn things. Um, so anyway, judges information, not as public speaking. Pammy? So the question is, if uh, you're just starting out, what would be the kind of things to think about about that system? Yeah, start with your communication systems. Um, we use Slack for our our day to day communication amongst the team. That was one of the first things I noticed when I got to printed threads. That everybody was walking everywhere or sending emails. And coming from the software world, I knew of a lot of tools that I that they just weren't aware of. Implementing Slack. Slack is like a, a corporate chat tool um, that is really easy and friendly to use. It's not expensive either, right? No, and they actually have a, fri a free version as well. You just don't get to keep your, your information forever. Sub question. All right, so the question is, uh, Google now has Google um, Group. And can that substitute instead of Slack? I don't know. I don't know enough about it to, to say whether or not it could. I, I like Google, and I like the Google app suite. We also use that. You're the only person in the world that likes Google. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. oh, you don't mean the company. Okay. No. <laughs> I, like, I love Google Drive and uh, all of the, the business applications you can use with Google, but I've, I've found their uh, Hangouts, I think, was an old one where you could do video chat and all that, and now they're adding on to that with this chat ability. I just don't love the user interface. It's not very friendly, and it is not a, I haven't found their native apps that you use on your phone or whatever to be as easy to use as, say, Slack. Anyone out there using that? Like, no? Okay. Yeah. Um, other questions? Um, Her, yeah. It's, so he said he's heard good things about Slack. It completely changed our business using that. Now nobody's walking anywhere. You never have to leave your desk. Like as far as efficiency goes, that was a huge efficiency gain for me. Well, it might tell you a lot. So um, actually, uh, I'm part of a community radio station that's at MIT. So it's half MIT students, one of the most advanced technology uh, universities, some would say. And all of them use Slack. <laughs> all right. So that tells Slackers. you something. <laughs> Slackers, yeah. Yeah, um, um, yeah another, uh, so email would be the next system. We implemented a, a tool called Front, 
which is a shared inbox application. So a lot of shops, like we have info at printedthreads.com. If you want to know anything, just email info at printed threads. And before that was just a, a distribution group. It would go out to everybody, but nobody knew if someone had read it or replied to it unless you included the team. And so how much uh, does that cost to add to front? Yeah, I think it's like $14 a user um, per month. So and, and really only your client reps need to be in it. So we even at the size we are, we've got, I think, four people that are fielding those emails and talking with our customers. So uh, I'm going to look into that one. That sounds not, pretty helpful. But yeah, it's it's essentially takes an email uh, and turns it into a task. So it comes into info. Everybody can see it. Then you can assign it out to a rep and if it's their client. And then in the future, if that client emails you, it remembers that, oh, that's that's Andy's client, uh, and it automatically moves the conversation to them. And then within, <laughs> within the email thread, you can actually comment around it as a team and create drafts and share them with, the, with each other. So you can say like, you know, they do it with me all the time. They're like, hey, what do you think about this response? Is this a good way to say this? Uh, I'll go in, tweak it give it back to them and then they send it on. So it's a really, really cool collaborative shared inbox tool. Wow. Um, All right. I'm already glad I did this. <laughs> um, question? Sure. Uh, how's the implementation process? Is <laughs> no, it abrupt or, or over time? We, Th we that question really? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I would love to stop the shop and, and do implementations like that. But yeah, with uh, with systems like this, uh, they're, they're actually really easy to use. And normally they have, like with Front, they have an implementation person that will help you get it all set up. So the system administrator is going to probably sink a day into getting the system online. Uh, but getting the team to learn how to use them and stuff is, is pretty natural with those two. So not a lot of time that you have to set aside for it. It's like, all right, we're going to start using this today and uh, see how it goes. And Does he I give the team any advance warning? I, I yeah, definitely the question. I definitely try to brace them. Yeah, like I, nobody likes change. Like change is hard, and so yes, as much as much notice as you can give to let them know it's coming. But I think if it's a good tool, and once they start using it, the first response is relief. They're like, "Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much better." They get excited, and then they dive into it, and then. They make it their own too. People, Slack is kind of a organic thing. You can create your own chat rooms. Uh, you can have private conversations with small groups. Uh, and so I'm kind of hands off with Slack at this point. They, they kind of uh, administer that system as a group. So how much of your systems are to solve today's problems and how much do you get to think about like maybe where you're headed? Yeah, we're uh, we're just now. I feel like getting to the point where we're we're starting to look forward and uh, think about what we want to invest in uh, developing or building for the future and how we scale. Um, a lot of a lot of what we've implemented was for the here and now, and and it's just kind of churning in the background. Um, maybe based on success or like things that were a problem. And anything for someone starting out that they really should think about because it's a lot easier to implement it at the beginning than later? That's a good question. Um, I think that I think that a good system for your your email, your customer facing communication uh, is vital. I know that like a lot of apps like Printavo have uh, a great way of being able to communicate with your clients within the application. It is sending emails and stuff, but all the history, all of the relationship uh, context is inside of that system. Right. And that is something that I really wish we had and had had uh, tried to implement sooner. Now we have it because we use Asana and that has a whole comment history around each individual order. Um, but it would be really nice to have all of that inside of one system. And there's, I think, Printavo uh, and Inksoft and several systems have that kind of stuff, but uh, but that would be a big one. You want to just uh, mention software that is out there because they're not all here for people to know yeah. what what to look look for, uh, and, and maybe I can name a couple too. Yeah, I think I mean Printavo, Inksoft, and uh, Shopworks. I think have been some of the bigger ones over the last few years. We uh, use Price It. That's another one to look Price at. It. It's very inexpensive. Um, 
Other ones that anyone else uses? Off the shelf shop management. Yeah. No, those a, no, oh, what's the one that Culture Studio uses? They have. Uh, starts with an S. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what it is? No. It starts with an S, and I can't think of it right now. Yeah, I'm not Pam, sure. You remember they were near us in Atlantic City two years ago? Like Kitty Corner Across. Uh, uh, you know what? My, my email is rick at inkitchen.com. If you're curious, you can email me and I'll, uh, I'll send you that info. Um, any more questions? I, I didn't hear the very beginning when you were saying uh, free educational and the podcast. You said it really fast and I didn't it's catch it. It's inkkitchen.com. So we have uh, all kinds of information. There's probably 500 posts up there about dye migration and organic embroidery thread and what have you. And it's all free. The podcast is called Low Bleed. Okay, I read that. There's three up there now, and there'll be more, and they will get shorter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have uh, YouTube's up uh, as well of a lot of the past shop talks, some of which are really, really good. I would recommend, like uh, Jacob Edwards is a visionary guy that we interviewed, Doug Charney from American Apparel, all kinds of uh, people we've interviewed. And uh, YouTube, I just look for Ink Kitchen. Ink Kitchen, yep. Yep. Um, other questions? All right. Ryan Graves. How about a hand for Ryan Graves? Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. That was great. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, we'll stick around if you have more questions.